I don't know what it's called. Like the ball carnival. Lady. I can't believe Alex didn't just like get bowed and straight up. So, okay. She's like, well, they're not my kids. I love Alex. All right, let's see if it works. <laughs> Let's see if it lasts. <laughs> what? We're talking about the <laughs> Okay, how about it? Twenty two. I'm getting twenty two. Oh, I think I was a little bit. Oh, we need to make a pop culture. I just feel like. Okay. What would have been constitutional isomer? If I had drawn it like this, that would have been constitutional isomer. Okay. If I had drawn it like This, what would that one have been? Referencing the first one. Stereo. Yes. So it's stereo even though you don't. Because this one is cis and this one is trans. Yeah, but. What? This again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought you had to have a double bond to have cis and trans. No, oh, you can have God. a double bond with cis and trans with ring. double bond or ring. Well, it's not an exception, it's just the other way. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, those are the only two ways. Okay, thanks. <laughs> if that makes you feel any better. Okay, here's a picture of a boat. We talked about boats last time. Okay. Um, you have to watch out for those hydrogens at the top. They're often called flagpole hydrogens, okay? You see they, they start running into each other. Okay, remember the chair conformation of cyclohexane is the most stable conformation. Derivatives of cyclohexane will almost always exist in the chair most of the time, just like that guy during football season. Sitting in a chair. Okay, that just broke, so I'm just like, it's just going to be shorter. We're going to have a short hydrogen. That's the way of it. Okay, so now we're going to add a group. Okay, so we're going to make methyl cyclohexane. So I'm going to take 
a little mild there. And I'm gonna put a methyl group on it. Here's my methyl group. Okay, it's my carbon. I've got blue hydrogens on my methyl group. So that should um, help make it stand out. Okay, so the one that's up there is this one. Okay, my methyl group is what? Axial or equatorial? Axial. Is it up or down? Up. Okay. So when I flip the chair, what's going to happen? Now, what is that methyl group? Equatorial. Is it still up? Yes. It should be still up. Okay. Remember, flipping the chair is not this. Okay. It's a different conformation. You're changing the head and the foot. And notice that that methyl only moved like that much. It was axial and then it's equatorial. It doesn't move very much, okay? It feels like a lot, but it isn't. Okay, so here is the equatorial one. Notice the methyl is still up. Okay, which one do you think is more stable? The equatorial one. Why? Because the methyl groups, like, it's more staggered that way. Okay, when the methyl group is axial, it can run into these hydrogens. I'm sure I have a picture of that. When it's equatorial, it's out here. Okay, and it's not running into those hydrogens. The difference is 5 to 95. At any given time, a chair confirmation, 95% of the methyls will be equatorial, okay? This one is more stable. That means it's lower in energy. Bless you. Okay, any questions on that so far? Okay, hang on. Here's a picture of the 1-3 um, diaxial interactions is what they're called. Okay, you can see over here you have those, but it's just between hydrogens. Now, the one three thing. Now, let me get that out of there. Okay, so this is the carbon that the methyl's on. Okay, the one three doesn't really have anything to do with nomenclature. Okay, it's just that this one is. One, two, three. It's on the third carbon away. And this one is on the third carbon away. And so the methyl, those hydrogens are interacting with these hydrogens. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's kind of like a wall. Okay. Okay. And by doing this and flipping, it's avoiding those. So the equatorial is more stable because it does not have one, three diaxial interactions. It's <coughs> avoiding. Okay. I thought maybe you might say that equatorial was more stable because I made my line bigger, but did you not notice that? A little hint. The top line, I made it bigger. <laughs> I guess I don't have to worry about that, do I? All right, so here is looking at it, okay, using those lovely Newman projections that you love, okay? So if you look at um, here, and um, here you can see the methyl is anti to carbon three, and it's anti to carbon five. It just depends on your point of view. When it is equatorial. Okay, so it's equatorial, and let me put it in the front, okay? And so you're looking down here, from here to here, okay? They're opposite each other, okay? They're anti, which is making it more stable. It's a little tricky <laughs> to see with these um, pictures. So remember, you're looking down this carbon-carbon bond right here. Okay, and here's your methyl, okay? And it's anti to this carbon over here, these two. They're opposite, okay? They're opposite. 
Why did I write what happens when the methyl group is equatorial? Oh, I don't know, but why I wrote that. Okay, so now let's change it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is instead of having a methyl there, what if I have a fluorine there? A fluorine is quite a bit smaller than a uh, methyl group. It's quite a bit smaller. Okay, it's only one atom and it's holding its electrons really tight. Okay, notice that the difference is 4060 now instead of 595. Okay, what if we put a big old honking T butyl group there? And I've got one of those to show you. Here's my T butyl group. Okay, so here's my uh, carbon, and then here's the three methyls on it. So I'm going to replace the methyl on here with the T butyl group. Okay, here it is, equatorial. Okay, okay. Notice it's still not particularly great, but look what happens when it's axial. Okay, you see how it's totally like running into these hydrogens. That a lot that forces the ring to be this way. Okay, so it's 99.99999% equatorial, and just a smidge will be axial at any given time. Okay, so here's my T butyl. Okay, so equatorial is more stable than axial. Why? Why is equatorial more stable than axial? What are you going to write on your test? No rock'em sock'em robots. <laughs> no rock'em sock'em robots. There's a little more technical term that you should put with that. <laughs> what? That's Van der Waals term. Yeah, because you're avoiding those one, three diaxial interactions. You don't have them when you're equatorial. Okay. <coughs> You don't have those 1-3 diaxial interactions. See how it's running into these hydrogens that are axial? You don't have them when you're equatorial. You're avoiding them. Okay. Wow. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, we will do some other ones next time. I think we should do. A, I think we that one. Yeah. Yeah. We had freebies last time. Oh my gosh. Okay, something is. This is like a different file or something. All right, so let me. Um, I'm gonna do this. Did all my writing go away? Okay, so we're going to do add a group level two. So we're going to add two methyl groups. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm telling you, it just keeps coming. <coughs> All right, so I use that one that was blue again because I think it's easier to see. And unfortunately, I guess I could try to make a red one, but. We won't go there. Okay, so I'm making 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexane. Okay, so that means that my methyls are on carbon 1 and 4. Okay, now I'm not writing in all the hydrogens on the cyclohexane ring, mainly to make it easier for you all to see. Okay, so if it's cis, they both have to be going up or down. It doesn't matter what you pick. Okay, so what did I do here? This methyl is? up okay so that's this one so this methyl has to be up i can find the bond yes i can okay so here it is okay notice one three diaxial interactions what happens when you flip the chair we're going to take the bottom and put it up and the up and put it down so Okay, so this methyl is now equatorial. And the methyl over here on this side 
is now axial. So you always, when you flip between two chairs, you're always flipping um, between axial and equatorial on your groups and your hydrogens, actually. Okay, so this one, this is one. I tried to color code them just so <coughs> you could see. Okay, and this is carbon four, and this is carbon four. Okay, so do you see the two different chairs? By the way, how is your drawing of your chairs coming? Keep working on it. You, you just gotta practice. What? What did you say? Nothing. I answered my question. Oh, okay. I thought you were telling me something I needed to hear. Me or her? I don't know. Either one of you. I'll tell you. Okay. Now I'm gonna say which one of these is more stable, and you're gonna say they're equal. And why did you say that? Because the lines are out of one free diaxial interaction. Because here you've got one, three diaxial interactions. And here you've got one, three diaxial interactions. There's no difference between the two. Agree? Are they also equal because the arrows are equal? <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Okay. All right. So now we're going to put, wait, did I skip the trans? Okay. I'm like, where's the trans? That should be in there. All right. Hang on. I'll erase this stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't notice it earlier. Okay. I was fighting with the smart board instead. Okay. So here is the trans. Okay, once again, this is carbon one, and this is carbon four. One, I'll make a match. Okay, notice that they're trans. How do you know they're trans? Because one is up and one is down, right? And then what happens when we flip them? We just become equatorial. We go from axials to equatorials. The one that's up is still up, okay? The one that's down is still down, okay? That methyl is still down, but it's equatorial now. Okay, now when you look at these, which one do you think is more stable? Do you have to draw these? Yes. All right, good practice. Okay, which one is the most stable? The first one is the most stable? The first one is less stable. Okay, why? Yes, it has them on the top and it has them on the bottom. Okay, and what about this one? It has no one three diaxial interactions. Your book may also use the word one three diaxial repulsion, which is fine. You got to get the one three thing in there. Can you explain where that's coming from again? Where what? I don't know how you're. How I'm getting one three? Yeah. One, two, three, axial hydrogen. One, two, three, axial hydrogen. It's, it's not a nomenclature thing, okay? It is just that that hydrogen is three away. And this hydrogen is three carbons away from the one we're discussing, is all, okay? And you have them on the bottom too. <laughs> just remember they go every other one. So here's the one on the bottom. 
get in there. Here's the one on the bottom. One, two, three. One, two, three, diaxial interactions. Okay. What do you think would happen if we had one, three dimethyl? Instead of one, four dimethyl. Look at this one. What do we have now? We have one, three diaxial interactions between the methyl groups. Do you think that's worse than this one? Mm -hmm, it's worse. It's higher in energy. Okay. The second structure has no one, three diaxial interactions between the methyls and any hydrogens. It has none. Oh my. Okay, so now here is all of the confirmations. Well, I'll, you could just go back and write A, B, C, D. That's too much. Oh, look what I did. <laughs> well, look at the pictures and you can figure it out. Hang on, we'll do it here in a second. <coughs> okay, so look at A. What one is that one? What are the two methyls? They're cis, okay? And this one is equatorial, and this one is axial, okay? So go back to your slide, which one is that? Is that the first one or the second one? Hmm? What? He's on our slide. I know, but didn't you just draw them all down? What, or did you not bother to draw them down? We're supposed to draw them down. I thought y'all were drawing. Yeah. Well, they're equal stabilities. Right. But which one was A? Which one had the left one equatorial and the right one axial? <coughs> the first one. Okay, so write A underneath it. Okay. Then when you flipped it, all I did was cut and paste them from the other slide. Okay, this one is axial and this one is equatorial. So this one is? The second one, so that's B. Okay, C and D are the two trans ones. C is the one where you've got the blue one is up and the red one is down. Okay, they're both axial. That's C. And then D is where they're both equatorial. Okay, so if you were gonna put all four of them in order of decreasing stability, so what does that mean? Right, most to least. If it's increasing, you go least to most, okay? Okay, so which one of those is the most stable? It's D because it has zero one, three diaxial interactions between the methyl groups and the hydrogen. Okay, A and B, we already said were equal in stability, but they are more stable than C, right? Because C has one, three diaxial interactions on the top and on the bottom. Okay. Are you with me now? Just write the A, B, C, D thing. Okay, now we're gonna draw all of the chair conformations for cis and trans, one T-butyl, two methyl cyclohexane. Put them in order of decreasing stability. Are we skipping the drawing chairs and acting chemistry class? Oh, I didn't even know that was in there. Yeah, because you don't use mastering chemistry, so. I didn't realize that was still in there. They didn't tell me that last year <laughs> when we went to Fayette Point.
Have you had to draw them in sapling yet? Or we were waiting for the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Keep telling me. Okay, so how do you start doing this? What are we going to do? Draw a chair. Draw a chair. Okay. I'm going to draw them on the board. Sorry, video people. But there's not enough room. Oh, I could add a slide. Let me hang on. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see if I can draw a chair. Okay, how you doing on that part? See, mine lined up kind of, they weren't really good. All right, so we're going to go up. Down, up, down, up, down. Okay, then you have your imaginary line. This one, this axial is down, so the equatorial is where? Up a little bit. This axial is up, so the equatorial is down a little bit. And maybe a little crooked. This one is up, so we go down a little bit. And notice that they are all poking to the left. The ones on the right, those three are all going to poke to the right. The, these are the two that people like to get mixed up. Okay, so we're going down, so we're going to go up a little. We're up, so we go down a little. We're down, so we go up a little. Okay, now it says one, three, one T-butyl, three methyl. Was that it, or was it two methyl? Y'all have it. Two methyl. Uh, four, four, methyl. Methyl. four methyl. Oh, what? Okay. I don't know why I thought it was two. Okay. What? You thought I thought it was two, but it's four. Okay. All right. Maybe I can't read. All right. So, what carbon do you want to be number one? Yeah, pick that. Does, does it matter? It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It doesn't really matter as long as you put the methyl on carbon four. Okay. okay. So that they're opposite. The easiest ones to see are going to be these. So this would be one and this would be four. So you just can go around either way like that? Yeah, it doesn't that's, matter. That's legal. But you could even start here if you like that. <laughs> okay. But usually it's easier to see on the end. Okay, so I'm going to put, what do you want me to put on one? My T-butyl group. Okay, and I put it axial. Okay, we're going to draw the cis ones first. Is the T-butyl group up or down? Down. Um, you get it? Yeah, you lie. <laughs> okay, do you see this is the up, this is the down? Yeah. There's an up and a down on every single carbon. Okay, this is an up, this is the down. Okay, so that one is down. It's on towards the bottom. Face to the bottom. Up, face to the top. All right, now look at number four. In order for the methyl and the T-butyl to be cis, the methyl has to be the same orientation as this one, up or down. This one is down, so the methyl has to be down, okay? So, do I put the methyl on the axial or the equatorial spot? Equatorial. Better? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, now look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip the chair. And by the way, this is equilibrium, not resonance. Gotta keep all that straight. All right, so I'm gonna flip the chair. So what that means is the bottom is gonna go up and the top is gonna go down, okay? So it's gonna be this chair. Beep. I blame the smart board, truly. 
All right, so go when you get your carbons done, go up, down, up, down, up, down. And then put in your equatorial ones. Okay, so where is carbon one on the chair on the right? Where is carbon number one? Yes. Okay, my T butyl group was on carbon number one. Okay, it was axial, so now it should be equatorial. Okay, so where do I write it? <coughs> right here. That's a three. Okay, there's my T butyl group. Now, where is carbon four? And just to clarify, I'm going to go ahead and number the carbons again, like I did on the first one. That's why I had that support. <laughs> okay, so where is my methyl now? Axial. Down, and it's axial. How you doing? Okay, all right, so those are the cis ones. Let's draw the trans ones. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the first chair. Okay, up, down, up. <coughs> so for the first one, is your like pointy end always pointing that way? Okay. Well, it doesn't matter which one you would draw first, just as long as you draw the two. So but I one? just do that because that one's easier for me to draw. Okay. So it doesn't matter as long as you're opposite. Okay. okay. Okay, so here's carbon one. I'll number the carbons again, so we stay in the same orientation. If we start moving around, it makes it harder to tell things. Okay, so where do you want me to put my T-butyl on this? Let's put it axial, because if I make it equatorial, it ain't gonna fit, because I can't write over here. Okay, so I'm gonna put it here. It really doesn't matter, though. Okay, now, in order for this to be trans, on carbon four, where does my methyl have to be? Oh. Right. And what position is that going to be? Axial or equatorial? Axial. Okay, now we're going to do the next one. Okay, so I'm going to flip my chair. Okay, so the T butyl is down and axial. Where is it over here? Where is carbon one? Can you find it? Goes up, that goes down. So where is this carbon now? Does everybody find it? Okay. Okay, so where is my T-butyl? Is it axial or equatorial? It's equatorial. Okay, and what do I have on carbon four? My methyl and it is equatorial. And you'll notice that it is going up. Okay, now I'm gonna do your most favorite thing and I'm gonna go A, B, C, D. Okay, you can, doesn't, it doesn't matter which one ends up A, B, C, or D, I'll look at your pictures, okay? All right, now put them in order of decreasing stability. So that means what to what? Most to least stable. Okay, so which one is most stable, you think? D, why? 
You know I'm going to say why. No uh, diaxial interaction. Right. Okay. D is more stable than what? A. Are A and B the same? Yes. Are you sure? Hmm. <coughs> Let's look at the model. I'm serious. The model sells. Okay, so I need my T beetle group back that I took apart. Oops. No. The, okay. I need this to be like this. Okay. Now we're cooking. Okay. It starts to get really wacky when I have all these. <laughs> I need Siri to just uh, make me the pictures. That I need. <laughs> She's not very good at that. All right, so here is my T butyl group axial and my methyl group equatorial. Okay, okay. Did y'all get to see? See my rotten slapping robots over here? Okay, now I'm going to flip my chair. Now my methyl group is axial and my T butyl group is. Okay. My methyl group is axial and my T butyl group is equatorial. What do you think? B is what? Yes. Why? What is different about this example than the two methyls? We have two what? Different size groups. A T butyl is bulky and a methyl is kind of smallish. Okay, so running into those one, three diaxial interactions is going to be a whole lot more energy with the T butyl group. The T butyl group is going to do its utmost to avoid it. So A and B are not the same. Okay, B is more stable than A. And which one up here is the least stable? Oh. I wasn't even thinking about it. I just drew them. <laughs> All right, we'll fix it though. So I guess that T butyl weighs more, but why? What makes B? Is there just like one thing that makes it bigger than A? It makes it more stable, not bigger. Okay. Because the bigger group is equatorial. Mm -hmm. So if you had an isopropyl and a methyl, who's bigger? Isopropyl, it's got how many carbons? Three. <laughs> Even if at this point in time you're like, I can't draw that. You gotta be able to draw that by next week. So okay. It's a, it's a more because yeah. Because C, they're both axial. Okay, so both axial is the worst. All right, that makes sense. Okay. If you like give us, make us draw these or whatever, does it matter how you originally draw your chair? No. As long as you're, cons I, I would say be consistent. Okay. okay. But if you draw the other chair or you use this as one and that as four, it's fine. That doesn't matter. It's just like when you draw a structure, like if I asked you to draw three methyl pentane, y'all can draw it like a hundred ways and they're all correct, okay? That's why I agreed your stuff. Because to write out a key would take me a really long time. I only write one way when I write out a key. I don't write out 15 ways, okay? That makes sense? So this is similar. You're gonna get different ones. Okay, so here it was. Look at all that. And we're just going to do that. So it won't be in your, I won't miss it by accident. Deleting that. All right. How do you, how are you feeling about drawing them? Any better? It just takes practice. Okay, here is cis, one T-butyl, two methyl cyclohexane. Cis and trans, 
one T butyl, two methyl cyclohexane. Okay. So if you look at the first one, you'll see the T butyl is up and the methyl is also up. Okay. And then when you flip it, they're still up, but our methyl that was equatorial is now axial. And our T butyl that was axial is now equatorial. Okay. Here is the bottom one. For trans, this is axial, and this one's axial. And then when we flip them, they're both equatorial. So I already labeled them ABCD. Who is the most stable? Put them in order of decreasing stability. What are you going to do? Hmm? Good gravy. Okay, so who's the most stable? D as in? Okay. Am I going the right way? Okay. And then, and then, and then C. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you another question. Is trans always the most stable? No. It depends on where your groups are on the ring. Okay, so a trans one is not necessarily always going to be the most stable. It's going to be the one where you have both groups equatorial. <coughs> so for example, let's see what I got on the next slide. All right, hang on, we're going to add a page. Okay, so if I say one, three, di, ethyl, just to make you draw something else, cyclohexane. Okay, draw all four chairs, cis and trans. And I usually um, just kind of label them. Okay, now it's diethyl, so how many carbons are your little groups gonna have? They're gonna have what? Two carbons on each group of them, okay? So you could even just start by doing this. So all of these are gonna have this chair. Mm -hmm. And th But then you're gonna flip it. There's really two chairs. So where it's like that. See what you gotta practice? It's pretty sad when I mess them up, huh? I've drawn like thousands, probably. Okay, then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go. Ooh, I went goofy on that one. All right, I'll redraw and fix, try to fix it for you because that looks pretty sad. I'm sorry. Okay. I guess I'm just kind of low on the board as part of the problem. It really helps too if your carbons connect. Okay, bless you. All right, you got four chairs? Okay, so now pick what carbon you want to be one and what carbon you want to be three. It doesn't matter which ones you pick, okay? As long as you, if you stay consistent, you won't get mixed up. Do you notice that for each one, cis and trans, there's always how many chairs? Two, not three, not four, not 16. There's only two, okay? For cis and trans, there's gonna be a total of 
four. Okay, that's it. Okay. All right, so which carbon do you want to be number one? The one we've been using? Okay. So I'm going to write one. Do you want to count through the back or count through the front? I would three. Yeah. Uh, you want to go to the back? We'll go to the back. Okay. So on one, I'm going to have an ethyl. Do you want me to put the first ethyl here in carbon one, axial or equatorial? Axial? What? Equatorial? Axial. I was doing enough. All right, I'm going to put it axial. Okay, and then on carbon three, in order to be cis, is that ethyl group equatorial or axial? Axial. Good, you getting it? Okay. And if you write nicer, you can get it in there better. Okay, now I flip the chairs. Can you find carbons one and three on the chair that was flipped? That's one. And then who's three? Okay. The ethyl group was axial, so on carbon one, it's going to be equatorial, right? And you notice it's going down, just like this one. Because remember, we're not flipping like this. Okay, it's different. Okay, now on number three, okay, is where is that ethyl now? Equatorial. Okay, you ready to do the trans? I think the axial is easier to see, so I would say do that one first. So there's my axial ethyl. Okay, this is carbon one. Where's carbon three? Because you know this guy's going down. He's going down. Okay. It doesn't want to. Is it my finger? Where's my pen? I don't even know. Okay, so where is the ethyl group on carbon three so that it's trans? Which one is it? Is it axial? <coughs> is it go because this is down? So I I need to be what now? Up. So it's this one. Holy moly. Okay, that equatorial. That's equatorial. That's equatorial. Okay, now we're flipping. So I'm going to write one, two, three, because it just helps you keep track. Okay, the methyl, or sorry, the ethyl on carbon one is axial. So on the flipped one, it's Equatorial. Okay. On carbon three, on the first one, the ethyl is equatorial. So after you flip, it's axial. All right. I'm going to do the ABCD thing again. A, B, C. D, E, F, G. Okay, now which one of those, A, B, C, and D, is the most stable? Decreasing stability. We're doing the same thing. B. Notice that it is cis, isn't it? Okay, but the axial equatorial is the big deal. So B is more stable than D. C and D are the what? Same. Why? Because the groups are the same. Okay. If they weren't the same, the bigger group, Equatorial, would be more stable, like that last one. 
Okay, and then what's the last one? What's the least stable up there? A. Okay, how are you feeling about it? You need to practice drawing and practice doing it. Okay, we will review on Wednesday next week, the day of the test, and then are we reviewing on Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon? Monday. All right, on Monday we'll vote. I guess. <laughs> you can always come ask me questions if you can't come. Don't be shy. Uh oh, I think I lost the hydrogen. Oh, here it is. It's on the floor. I dropped the height. I'm surprised it didn't actually fly away. I have class on Wednesday from two o'clock. Okay, just come in. What do you have on Wednesday? I found. Did you skip? I skipped. Yeah. Well, I'm not requesting you. I didn't. Yeah, just come in. That's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. Just come after. But this time, the midterms are next week. I kind of have to be in class. Yeah, you kind of do. Mm -hmm. right, we don't want you to get in trouble. So right, just come at two. Dr. Thing is like, I mean, oh, nothing will. What about the other one? 